Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Glory Road teaching. I'm Adam King. Today we're going to be talking about a very important subject uh, that I believe will value uh, your situation and, and give you to where you have the power to get out of that thing and to speak to it and to change uh, everything about it. It brings value to your life, to your words, and uh, to whatever it is that you have in you. You can change any situation you uh, are facing right now if you can look at who you are on the inside. Jessica, thank you for coming today. So what question I want to ask you is what world do you live in? What world do you live in? Felicia, thank you so much for coming today. So let's go over here to John chapter 8, and we're going to start reading in verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall see me, and shall die in your sin. Or you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, That you shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Now, uh, when Jesus said this, Mandy, thank you for coming uh, today. Bless you. When He said, you are from beneath and I am from above, we automatically think this. Okay, beneath and above. So He's from way up there. <laughs> and and we're from way down here. Uh, or people might even think, well, you're from, you know, you, you have that little bit of hellish kind of lifestyle. You know, you're living in sin. So, you know, you're way beneath me and I'm way above. And that's where most Christians kind of think that way. You kind of look at everybody and judge them. But really, that's not what he's saying. Now, he says here, you'll die in your sin if you don't say, I am he. <laughs> if you don't believe that Jesus is not just the Messiah, but that He came to give us an example of how to live. He said, you'll die in your sin. Now, the, the Bible says this. He says that because of the law, there is sin. The law gives strength to the sin. When He talks about being beneath, He's not talking about being lower. He's talking about you being subject to the law. You are subject to the law. Therefore, you can't manifest the life that I bring because you're beneath it. You are subject underneath this, this the Ten Commandments under all those hundreds of commandments that they were supposed to, to walk by. They were stuck under there. They were beneath the life of God. Couldn't access it. As a matter of fact, John 3, 23, I believe it is, says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They fall so far beneath the power of the living God. But He's above the law, you see. In other words, He's not, he's not constrained by the, the law that was written in the Old Testament. He's above it. Now that tells me something. It tells me that He's got something that sets Him free from all of those written laws and all the limitations and all of those, those um, constraints upon man that keep him to where he's limited. So let's read that again. He said, you are from beneath, I am from above, you are of this world. Now he's talking about world, he's talking about system. From another system. See, you, you and I can easily get trapped in the world system. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of it, you see. But we can be so trapped by the laws and all of the do's and the don'ts that we begin to think like this world thinks. You, you begin to be constrained by the laws. Have you noticed that every, every uh, town you go into, every state you're involved in, 
whether you're going in and traveling through it or whether you move to a different state, whether you go to a different country. Every country, every state, every county, all your local governments are all governed by law. As soon as you step into it, you're, you're, you live by the constraints of laws. In other words, you can't go into some grocery store and grab an apple and walk out the door. Why? There's laws. And we live by those laws. So your potential is really locked up or hidden from sight by, by these laws. So you're from beneath. You're, in, you're from another world that Jesus did not even... He recognized it, but he was never in bondage to the elements that were in the world. See, when Peter was in the boat and all the disciples and the storm came, see, they saw death. They, they understood that the elements of the world, the power of the, the wind and the sea, could actually kill them. It had more power than they did. But in the mind of Jesus, see, he wasn't living by the constraints of natural law or any other kind of laws. He was above those laws. He had power. Now, why is this so? Because he was not from this world. Wait a second. I thought he was born here. He was. But he thought from another world. He lived from another world. Another system. Another government. Another way of thinking. When Jesus says repent or change the way you think, how are you going to change the way you think unless there's a new way of thinking? Unless there is another way of thinking. There is. And that's why he said, change the way you think. He was showing us through the word and, and to those that he actually walked in the earth in front of, he was showing them what world they are to be thinking from. The truth is, you and I are from another world. We're not from this world. Your inner man is spiritual. And your spirit isn't grounded in this world. Your natural body is. And that's the conflict between the inner and the outer man. So he said in verse 24 again, I said therefore unto you, you shall die in your sin. Now listen to the resolve here. Listen to how the superlative on this one. If you live in the world whereby you are affected by those laws that strengthen sin, you will die. Did you catch that? So if you live in this world and are limited by the laws, whether they be natural laws, whether they're physical laws, it doesn't matter whether they're all kinds of laws. If you're limited to those laws, you will die in your sin. Now, and I'm not telling you to go break the laws. <laughs> not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is, that, is that when the tornado comes your way and it's screaming at you, I'm going to kill you. Do you live up under that instruction or do you speak to the tornado? Which laws do you live from? Which world do you live from? If we live by the natural laws and, we, and we're, we're hindered by that, he said you will die in your sin. Well, if that's the truth, get this, if that's true, then it's also true if I can learn how to live from another world, I won't die in my sin. Isn't that true? So Jesus came to show us what it was like to live from another world. Even while he was in this world, he lived from another one. And they couldn't kill him until he said so. And the only reason he died was for you and me. And I believe it wasn't just to die for our sin. I believe that he came to show us the strength of the life that swallowed the death up that he became a partaker of on purpose to show you and me what kind of life you, you and I really have. It's from another world. See, you, you and I were sent here by the Spirit of God. I've said this many times on my life, is that God had a conversation with you and me before He sent us here. He totally equipped us, totally filled us up with everything we would ever need to be successful in this world. As a matter of fact, He just did one thing. He put the kingdom within you. <laughs> he put the kingdom in there and then he said, by the way, I give you my spirit. I give you my word. I give you my faith. I'll, I'll cause my love to be shed abroad in your heart. I give you my anointing. I give you my life. I give you everything. Now go down into this other world 
and transform it, colonize it, and make it look like heaven on earth. But see, as long as we're living in this world, not realizing we're from another world, we'll die in our sin because we'll always be limited by the world that we associate ourselves with. You can only give to the world what world you have inside of you. So God is saying this. He said, change the way you think. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, any virtue, any praise, think on these things. He tells us over there, as a matter of fact, I'll turn over there real quick to Matthew. He says this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Now the hill here represents the earth. The city represents the life of God. You are are the light or the life of God to this world system. God wants you to shine so that the world can see another world. (laughs) So they can come to the light and not have to walk in darkness. So they can learn to come out from under the laws and the restraints of those laws and live free. And live where death doesn't have a touch or the power over them. Now Jesus says over here back in John chapter Uh, 8, he says in verse 12, he said, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Not talking, didn't he just say we are the light of the world? Yeah. He said, I am the light of the world. He wasn't talking about the world here. He's talking about I am the light or the glory of this other system called the kingdom. He said, I've come to bear witness to that system, to that world, to that light, to that glory, to that life. And he says, you and I are the light of the world. See? So he put us in the same position he was in. So he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me or imitates me shall not walk in darkness or shall not walk in sin or shall not walk in death, but shall have the light of life. Now we know what the light is. The light of heaven is life. It's the life of heaven. See? Well, how do we get this to be produced in our life? How do we get this to where we won't die in our sin? Well, the best thing to do is the Bible says this and teaches this through Genesis all the way to Revelation that the Word of God produces the world of God. The Word of God produces the world of God. The world of God is the kingdom that abides on the inside of you. And if we'll speak the Word of God, not just chapter and verse and quoting it, or saying it is written, he's saying if you'll speak like you're from that world, as if you got a whole other system you're living by, so you don't get affected by the economy of this world system. The Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. It says as he is, so are we in this world. It doesn't say as he was, it says as he is. See, I am always is, never was. He is. Well, who is He? He's the light of the world. He's made us to be the light of the world. He has made us to, caused us to be the life. He came to give us abundant life or abundance of light, abundance of glory. This is, what, this is the world that we're supposed to be living in. What world do you live in? Do you live by the Word of God that produces the world of God? Let's go to John 15, verse 19, and this will be the last scripture I read. John chapter 15, verse 19. He said this, If you were of the world, the world love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore, the world hateth you. Now, it's interesting because we think he's talking about, yes, he took me out, called me out of this system, and and, uh, and now I'm kind of changed, and I don't don't drink anymore, and I don't smoke anymore, and I can tell, you know, I'm not like my friends were. He's not talking about that. Listen, he says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. He's talking about people who have realized where they're from. They're not even thinking about this world. They're from a whole other world. They're, they're literally in their thinking. I'm from God. I have His nature. 
They have their eyes open to finally know what a human being is. They know what a real man is. And the people in this world system have no idea who they are. They think they are what the government says they are. They think they are what their parents say they are. They think they are based on what their body says they are. But they haven't come to the revelation that they're not from here. <laughs> your body's from here, but your inner man is not. So if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of this world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. See, when God chose you, He chose you from the foundation of the world before He sent you here. He chose you out of the world of heaven. He chose you from Himself. He didn't pick you here in the world and say, okay, I just chose you, I'm going to leave him and her. No. He chose you from the very foundation. So out of this world, when you were with God, that's when He chose you. He chose you from the very foundation. So He's screaming at you and me, that we're, even though we're in this world system, our bodies are here, we're, we're governed by all of these things, He's saying, you're not from here, you're from me. And if you're from me and you have a revelation of it, you're free from the law. If you're free from the law, then you're free from sin, and if you're free from sin, you're free from death. All of these things tie in together, and it's our job to see it and to put it all together so that we don't miss the import of the gospel. What world do you live in? What world do you express to those around you? Do you still think like people in the world? Do you still think the way they do? You're not going to be above people, but you've got to be in a system that's above the thing that has them in bondage. That's what I want you to recognize about your life. Stand up, arise, and shine. For your light, the world of heaven, is come. Step into it and be everything God's called you to be. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming to today's live. I love you guys. Until we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you. Bye-bye.